Hey everyone, Rajat here from Rain Studios. So on this channel, we talk about building softwares from scratch up. And the demographics of this channel is mostly new students or people who are just dabbling with software development and they are learning how to create software systems from the ground up. So I thought that it would be a great idea to talk about a practical situation of writing systems and here we are today talking about login systems and password management because I think that it is a crucial part of building any type of software backend because there you have to manage the users so it is a critical piece of the entire puzzle of website development and almost every web enabled service out there in the wild uses such a system so it's a good idea to talk about this crucial piece of backend stack before i start the video i would like to make a small request if you have been following this channel or watching several videos from this channel and you haven't subscribed yet please do subscribe to this channel and let's make the subscribers count cross 5000 subscribers limit and let's dive right into this login system so as we know that every single website has a login system and there are two major parts of this entire authentication process the first one is the sign up form where the website collects necessary data to identify you for further sessions and then it also has a login session where it ask you for the credentials you have already provided to the website and then it can verify your credentials and then subsequently log you in in case those details are correct so these are two quintessential parts of any login or authentication system so let's talk about both of these parts in detail so the very first part is the sign up area or the sign up form so from this sign up form the website or the web service collects your credentials which you would like to use in the future in order to authenticate with the website once this data is collected this data is transferred over to the web service now you can use apis or you can use direct form submission using html to collect and send that data over to the backend now in the backend you have this validator component the job of this component is to verify the data like whether you have provided a correct email whether it is actually a email address which you have provided or it is just a random string or a numeric value which can not serve as a valid email address then you can also plug in several checks like what is the length of the password is the password having any sort of alphanumeric character or there can be other checks as per your needs so all of those checks go into this validator thing after the validation is done you have to store these details provided by the user into the database but here is the catch you do not store plain text passwords in the database because if you do that and somebody else like a pirate or a hacker gets access to your database he is going to have the details like the email addresses and the passwords of every single user on your website which means that all those details will be compromised in case your database gets hacked and nobody certainly wants that so hashing is a industry leading methodology or algorithm used by almost all authentication systems in order to protect those passwords so what actually happens in this hashing stage see after verifying the data you pass the plain text password along with a salt a salt is just a random string which only your web service knows so it is local or private to the web service so along with this salt the plain text password is passed into a hashing algorithm and based on the hashing algorithm it outputs a unique random string and this hashing algorithm always outputs the same string when you input the same password along with the same salt so 
the output is always constant and same when the input is same as well okay so after hashing the plain text password along with the salt the output from this hashing algorithm is stored in the database along with the email id and other details so this can be a exemplar representation of what actually gets stored in the database so the plain text password along with the salt was passed into this hashing algorithm and then this hashing algorithm did some calculation and based on those calculation it output this password string and which gets stored in the database along with the email id of the user so this completes the sign up process now comes the login part now again a website forwards you to a connect session where you can type in the details and then it can log you in so it collects some part of the details mostly email and password in order to identify whether you are a right person or not after collecting this data again it can choose to transfer the data via html form or via api over to the backend where the validator again verifies whether you have provided inputs that are in accordance with the login form or the business logic so it verifies whether the email you have provided is actually an email or not and things like that so after this validation is complete your plain text password along with the salt which we have used in sign up phase is passed over to the hashing algorithm again the hash of your plain text password along with the salt is computed and this hash and now this hash is again verified against the hash that is stored in your record in the database in case those details match the server generates what is known as a cookie or a jwt or a json web token so cookie and json web tokens are alternating technologies used by many websites to identify the logged in sessions now this cookie or jwt is passed on to the client the client systems store these cookies and jwts and these jwts and cookies are passed on to the server in every single request so based on this cookie and jwt the server identifies whether the request is authenticated or not and who the authenticated user is once your client system has these jwts and cookies you no longer have to send in your email password details time and again over to the server because this cookie and jwt can act as a verification token for you as you can see here so the website front end after verification stores the cookie and upon any subsequent request this cookie or the jwt gets transferred over to the back end of the website where the website backend can readily verify the jwt or the cookie and after the verification is done it performs the business logic and sends the response data over to the website front end which is open right in front of you so this cookie and jwt actually alleviates the chances of your details getting hacked via eavesdropping where a man in the middle can obtain your private information by just tapping into the network so cookie or jw2 actually help us in preventing such kind of attacks so that is how you actually build a robust login and authentication system obviously there are newer methodologies and technologies to authenticate your users in like oauth and oauth2 etc but this has always been the traditional way of building login and password management system so in case you have been contemplating building a login system for your website or for your web service you now have a decent knowledge about how to go about building such a system on your own without relying on third party solutions in case you have designed a proprietary login management system for your website do not forget to share your website with the community in the comment section and 
in case you have any more doubts regarding this subject matter do not forget to ask your doubts in the comment section in case you enjoyed the content do not forget to like this video and share this video with your developer friends and one more thing do not forget to subscribe let's get the subscribers count over 5000 subscribers thank you all for your time take care bye bye